we will see how this goes with the wind and this mic and if it gets to be too crackly and popply, I will switch to another mic. And if it remains to be too windy, I'll just yell out a jowl. Is that okay? I do have a voice that will allow that, but then I may not be able to speak for the rest of the week if I do that. There is some drawbacks to having a loud voice. Well, again, thank you for coming out and joining us. It is a, a beautiful, wonderful day. We did this sort of service um, now three-ish years ago, and we have a couple of people in attendance today who are among uh, the 15 people we did that time, and that was pretty incredible. And we've got at least a dozen today who are going to be baptized. And if God works in your heart while we're sitting here and you decide, hey, this is the day I need to get baptized and let's get it done. And you weren't among the initial 12, we can still baptize you. Uh, the process, however, is before you do that, you do need to meet with our deacons and share your faith story. And then uh, we will be happy to baptize you today. We will rejoice in that and, and celebrate. And so if you want to be added to the number today, we can do that. And... Uh, that is certainly among the options. And we did that last time. In fact, uh, we had one person we added to our, our group on the last time, and, and it's a great thing. And so as long as I'm still here, I'm willing to baptize people today. And if you decide, well, today wasn't the day, but you still want to get baptized. Um, in fact, I got a text message earlier from a father and his son who both want to be baptized. But he said, we can't today. And, and, and I've kind of known this was in the wings a ways out. He said, let's get this scheduled. So. So we have at least two more uh, coming up at some point, and, and God is good. And so it's just celebrating with that. Well, I'm going to share with you today, uh, most of you I suspect didn't bring a uh, Bible, but if you have an iPhone, you're certainly welcome to pop that open if you got enough signal up here to, to at least get into like version Bible app. I'm going to be in Matthew 3, 13 through 17. It's a passage that most of you will be familiar with, and uh, so if you don't look it up, I'm going to read it to you, so don't worry too much about it. But as we, uh, as we study the life of Jesus, if you think about the life of Jesus, in fact, it, we've run across some events that you and I, average people, just basic run-of-the-mill Joes, can't exactly repeat. You know, There's things we can't come close to imitating in the life of Jesus. Things that he did, for example, we, we, we read in Scripture where Jesus knew what other people were thinking. Right now, now, despite what you may think as a child, your parents can't actually read your mind, right? <laughs> Uh, but but we can't read minds. Je Jesus, at times, had this fantastic ability. He had all sorts of other experiences and abilities that, that, that we personally can't do. We read about an event in the Bible like his transfiguration, where, where at, at the t point of his transfiguration, Jesus' glory, his divine nature was, 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 was so much so that he, he began to shine, it says, and, and it made his body as if to glow. And, and of course... You know, I can kind of sweat, and we might call that a glow, but I'm not glowing like Jesus, right? So, so, so we don't have the ability to imitate Jesus in, in that way. But as we look at Jesus, there are some things that, that we can have in common. As we look at Jesus' baptism, we discover that we too can imitate him um, through our own baptisms. Not in every detail, of course. Um, I will be shocked and amazed if a dove descends today, but... We can, for the most part, do what Jesus did at his baptism. Not every detail, but in the very same spirit of, of why he was baptized. And so today we're going to look at the baptism of Jesus and see how we might be able to follow his example. Now to understand part of the significance of, of Jesus' baptism, we have to, uh, of course, place this in the overall kind of timeline of, of Jesus' life. Now as you, as you probably know, I'll assume most of you, have been to church before, but as you probably do know, Jesus was born into this world with tremendous fanfare, right? Uh, he, he, he was born on an occasion that there was a number of supernatural events that, that surrounded his birth. Of course, at this time, if you remember Christmas time, we talked about some of these things, that, that at the birth of Jesus, the, the angels were working overtime. Um, they, 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 they show up a bunch in this story. Uh, these angelic visitors, they come, they visit some people, they of course visit Joseph, they, they visit with Mary, they visit with Zachariah. Then, of course, the angels, they show up again, and, and, and a whole choir of them, in fact, show up, and they appear in the night sky to announce the Lord's birth to a, to a group of kind of mangy shepherds out in the wilderness, right? And then, then, of course, the supernatural light leads the, the, the wise men, the magi from the east, to the place where Jesus was, and they show up, and they, of course, hail him and refer to him as the, the king of the Jews. And after all those incredible events, well, 
the story kind of goes silent for the most part, right? We have one more story in the life of Jesus when he's about 12 years old of him at the temple. And apart from him going to the temple at that time with his family and then he was there demonstrating his knowledge of, of, of scripture, the Bible doesn't record any other details about Jesus' childhood. Uh, apparently, he just lived a quiet, normal life for all of those years. Now, I'm sure there were some things that were remarkable along the way. We aren't given those. God didn't feel the need to clue you and I in onto all of those things that transpired over those years. And I have to think that the fact that Jesus lived such, relatively speaking, in an ordinary life for so long was probably pretty confusing and possibly quite frustrating for some of the people in his life. I mean, they, they knew about his incredible birth. They, they, they knew who he was supposed to be. But for the majority of 30-ish years, nothing really seemed to be occurring, right? And so surely they had to just kind of be waiting and wondering, is today the day? When's it going to happen? When's it going to go? What, what, when, when, when's he going to kick this thing off? Let's get going, right? Just ready for amazing things to happen through him. Yeah, he just grew up like a, a normal Jewish boy. Uh, Rich Mullins is one of my favorite Christian musicians. He passed away a number of years ago. And he sings a song talking about how Jesus, you know, and of course, fictionally speaking, but how Jesus probably fell and scraped his knee, right? Just like a, any boy does along the way. And, and just that, that, that simplicity of, of the connection of, of Jesus living a, a very normal human life because he was absolutely a, a, a human in all aspects. And so the family around him has to be wondering, when's it going to happen? Well, Jesus' baptism was the event that began to change all of that. From the day at which Jesus was baptized, from that day forward, Jesus' life was anything but ordinary as we study the scriptures. It was, in fact, absolutely extraordinary in every single way. Jesus' baptism marked effectively this turning point in his life. And it was at this very moment that his ministry began to take shape. And, and if you don't know the story, Jesus' cousin, John, we call him John the Baptist, they probably didn't call him John the Baptist back then. They just called him John. But John the Baptist began to baptize some of their fellow Jewish countrymen down in the, in the Jordan River there in Israel. And, 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 of course, we call him John the Baptist because that's what he was doing. He was baptizing people. Uh, but the thing that was odd about this wasn't that people were getting baptized. It was that Jewish people were getting baptized. Now, that, that was an unusual thing. Because, you see, normally the Jews didn't utilize the ritual of baptism for themselves. They used it exclusively for the Gentiles who wanted to convert into Judaism. So if you were a, a non-Yahweh follower and you didn't grow up with Jewish ethnic heritage and you wanted into the, the, the club of followers of Yahweh, well then, you would go and get baptized. Because you see, the, the Jews thought of the Gentiles as needing a new start. They do, right? They needed a new start. And a whole new beginning is what this baptism symbolizes. They didn't, the Jews didn't see themselves in the same light as needing this new start because they, had, they were in the club. They had the, the right heritage. They had what they thought it took to be part, right? Now, of course, the Jews were aware that they had committed sins. And, you know, they, they, sure, every so often, yeah, 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 yeah I, I do sin here and there or whatever. But they believed that it was their connection to Abraham that put them on good terms with God from the moment they were born. It was through the heritage of, of Judaism, being a Jew. But John comes along, and he begins to warn the Jewish people, well, that's not true. And he, and he tells the people, if you want to be on good terms with God, you too need to have a fresh start, just the same as you've been making these Gentiles. And so they had to begin to realize that it wasn't their family tree that made them right with God, that it was their faith that makes them right with God. So they too needed to repent of their sins and express their faith in God. So John here uniquely begins to call people uh, in, in, into relationship with God in a way that, that they had not previously been doing. And, and John calls them to undergo baptism, which as I said is, is, is something that didn't normally occur for Jewish people. Now as John is doing this, of course, uh, John's quite the character. If you've never studied John in the Old Testament, he's this guy who basically ran around wearing a burlap sack, eating locusts and honey, and, and he, was, he was an interesting character, of course. He's Jesus' cousin. But uh, 
apart from that, he is, is really seen as very unique because he's out there baptizing these Jews. It begins to draw a lot of attention, right? And the fact that the public is, is now seeing this, they're going, what is this guy doing? Why are, why are Jews going out into the river? What, what's going on here? Um, it, 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 it seems to be at least part of the reason that Jesus himself comes along and, and he joins in on it and, and get baptized as well. And Jesus' baptism in this moment serves as his announcement to the world of, of exactly who he was. And there was no mistake from that point on who he was. This, this becomes his big entrance in, into the public stage. And with all the supernatural events that take place, it, he makes quite, quite an impressive entrance, I, I can imagine. And so as we think about baptism, baptism is to serve as a somewhat similar rule for us. It should serve as our entrance into the, the public stage. Baptism is a public profession of faith. That, that It's saying, yes, right here, I am a follower of Christ. It's no longer hidden, it's no longer personal, it's no longer private, it, it, it's a public event. When you place your faith in Jesus, that, that decision of course transforms you, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those around you know that you've made that decision unless you've chosen to tell them. And your baptism is meant to function as a, a, a formal declaration to, that you are a, a follower of Jesus at this point. You want to be identified with him. So let's take a, a closer look at what happened when Jesus came to be baptized by John. As I said, we'll be in Matthew 3, and uh, I'll start in verse 13. We'll go through 14, 15, 16, and 17 there as we go. And uh, I'll read the first two verses, 13 and 14, from Matthew 3. It says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Now notice there in that passage how, how John is initially resistant to Jesus' effort to get baptized. After all, John's baptism here, as he's baptizing people there, he's, he, it's designed for people to express repentance, right? And John, of course, knows fully well that Jesus has nothing to repent of. But Jesus persuades him nonetheless, and he replies with this verse in verse 15. It says, But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. See, Jesus knew that it was God the Father's will for him to be baptized. And this statement is just one of many that highlight the care and concern that Jesus had at all times to carry out his Father's will. In John 4.33, it describes... Jesus talks about obedience, and, and he says it's the very food of his soul. It's the thing that sustained him, that this obedience of Jesus to the Father God. He says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. That's what Jesus says, his very purpose is. And in his eagerness to do his Father's will, Jesus has given us precisely the example that we should follow. We must also... We have a, a, a careful concern to obey God's will in, in all that we do. Before Jesus returned back to heaven, he spoke these words to his disciples in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. He says, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you until the end of the age. And it's at this point, it's almost as if Jesus could have said to them, Go, teach them to all follow my example. Just as I have obeyed the Father in everything, go and make disciples, and as you do that, teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And therefore, for us, choosing to be baptized is an expression of our commitment to do all that Jesus has commanded us. And with such a, a public expression, Within that, then, should come a, a new, uh, a, a new level, a, a new portion, a new focus on accountability with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so today, as we as we do this, we, we should celebrate with our candidates today and, and affirm them this decision that they have made is such an important thing. They they are saying yes. I am publicly witnessing and saying I'm following Jesus. There's no going back. And we need to celebrate that. We need to rejoice. We need to lift them up. We need to encourage them um, that they are doing this. And then we, who are not getting baptized but have previously done so, should, should renew our commitment 
renew it, to, to renew our efforts to, to, to also walk along with them, to encourage them, to help them to grow as followers of Jesus, and in the same aspect, grow ourselves as well. Jesus was very careful to carry out the Father's will, and on the occasion of his baptism, the Father wanted to make his opinion of Jesus publicly known so that everyone who witnessed it, everyone who was at that event, everyone who saw it, might begin to understand exactly who Jesus was. If you're following along, notice what takes place after Jesus comes up from the water in verses 16 and 17. It says, this is Matthew 3, 16 and 17. It says, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and then then he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove coming to rest upon him and behold a voice from heaven said this is my beloved son with whom i am well pleased now that day that the, there, there were other jewish people in the crowd other people around and those people who witnessed this they, they would have been people familiar with their Old Testament, of course, and their thoughts probably turned back to Isaiah 42, 1 and 2, where it says, Behold my servant to whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. For I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nation. See, everyone who, who witnessed Jesus' baptism that day, the man that they saw go down into the river, might have just seen like some young man from Galilee, right? But when he comes up from that water, they had the unmistakable signs that this man was unique and this man was special. And from that moment on, Jesus' life would never again be quiet or private. These people had heard from heaven that Jesus is the Son of God. And that if they followed his life, they would start to, to learn then what that meant. Now God the Father's declaration from heaven is filled with incredible love, incredible compassion here. And it would be a, a terrible oversight for me not to, to remind you today that when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that, that in that, we, we kind of get the spillover effect of the pleasure of God, the pleasure that God the Father has with God the Son, that he is so pleased. This is my Son with whom I am well pleased, right? And God is saying, I am absolutely pleased with Jesus. And when we choose to follow Jesus, and then when we follow Jesus into the waters and get baptized, that spillover effect comes upon us. That, that pleasure of God comes upon us. When we are born again and, and, and our spiritual growth begins, when our life is no longer hidden, spiritually speaking, God the Father takes deep pleasure in that. I believe absolutely that today, heaven's going to rejoice as we celebrate these baptisms. And it's a truly beautiful and wonderful thing. And, and I hope and pray that it's as memorable for each and every one of our candidates today as it will be for me. I will remember forever this day. And as you get baptized, because of your new status as a child of God, know fully that God delights in you as he delights in Christ. That's part of taking on the righteousness of Christ. That when God sees you now, he sees you as his child and that's a beautiful thing that's part of the symbolism of what we do with baptism as we as we celebrate baptism as we see as we go out in the water here in a few minutes you're going to see the the, the the ties that come with the life of christ as we go into the water and they go down into the water it begins to symbolize that 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 we have been joined with jesus in his death his burial his resurrection and that our destiny is tied to his destiny and then when they rise from the water, as Jesus rose from the grave, we see that we then become that, again, that new creation. We are dead to our old self. Our old passions, our old desires are gone. And we have been made alive and anew in Christ as his children. So today, may we rejoice in all that Jesus has accomplished for us, in how the act of baptism reminds us and how it symbolizes for us. Rejoice and celebrate as we go down into the water the beauty of God's great love and the wonderful opportunity that provides us for us to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Now, so we're absolutely clear. Baptism does not get you into heaven. That comes through a relationship with Christ and Christ alone. Baptism is a public response. It's a public 
display. It's a public identification saying, yes, I've made that decision. And that's why the processes we have at Glory are what they are. So that, as I said earlier, if you choose, you would like to be baptized today, and you're not on the 12 that we've already vetted, you can, but you need to meet with our deacons. They want to hear your faith story. They just want to confirm that you indeed have chosen to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's a rule given to our deacons and deaconesses as as guards and guides of the theology of the church and, and spiritual leaders of our church. They, they, they have that responsibility. I appreciate that they take that seriously and they do it well. So today, as we're out here, if God is working in your heart and you want to get baptized, you can talk to one of our deacons. It's uh, Greg Pearson, Steve Pearson, Dan uh, Swanson, and Gary Bradford. And then our deaconesses are... Um, we have uh, Gail, but uh, Gail's here. Yep. And then Lila, an artist, and Carol. So four ladies kind of in the middle, and the guys are spread everywhere. If you would like to get baptized today and you're not on the list, talk with them. They will pull you over to the side and, and, and meet with you. And we can do it, as I said, as long as I'm here, I'll say as long as people want to get baptized, it's, it's God's will, and we will do it. So. With that, uh, let us close in prayer, and then we are going to transition on into the baptisms themselves. Father God, I pray today that, again, you would just reveal yourself anew in all of our hearts, but particularly to those being baptized, that, that God, they have boldly said, yes, I want to be identified with the followers of Jesus Christ. And so, God, in that, I pray that you would give them a new boldness in their faith. Give them uh, just opportunities in the days and weeks and months to come to share your great love with those around them. And God, I pray for those who, who are sitting here who have maybe been just sitting on the sidelines. Lord, I know what that's like. I, I waited for years myself to get baptized. And, and that day when I finally said, today's the day, I, I'm so glad that I did that. And Lord, if there's those among us at this moment, uh, or maybe those at home, or those who might watch my video later, when, when that time comes, Lord, may they boldly step forward and say, yep, it's time for me to identify publicly. I and a follower of Jesus. And so God, I just pray for each and every one that is doing that, that you would be working in their hearts and that truly uh, you would give them a boldness of faith through that. And God, again, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've created, for the chance for us to, to gather in song and word and then now in baptism and later in food and fellowship and fun. May your blessing be upon all that we do. And in that, God, may we give you the glory, honor, and praise for all of it. For you and you alone are worthy. Lord, we thank you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' high and holy and beautiful name. Amen. All right, well, with that, so what we're going to do is in a, just a little moment, all of our baptismal candidates can come on up. The rest of you can kind of stay seated. And, and then as uh, you want to get pictures and whatnot as we're doing it, feel free to take your family photos down. As, as we're doing that, Pastor Kevin and I are going to be out in the water. We have, if I can find it, here it is. We have three questions that we'll ask each baptism at each, at each baptismal candidate. Uh, we will ask these, and then upon their affirmation, we will then proceed to baptize them, and then we are going to rejoice, we're going to celebrate, we're going to make as much noise, we're going to clap, we're going to hoot, we're going to holler, and that's okay, even if you're Swedish Baptist, to do that, because this is a great day. So with that, I'm going to shut up, and we're going to transition into baptism, all right? Let's do this.
Peter Nix, you want to be first? Are you willing? Yeah. Uh, sure, sure, sure. So these are the three questions we'll be asking each of the candidates. And uh, I'll speak loud enough, and then the candidates can choose how loud they want to be. But the first question is, Peter, are you trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, please respond by saying, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Do you turn away from any known sin in your life, asking God to forgive you of your sin? If so, respond by, I do. I do. Do you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit in your life, that you may live a life that is pleasing to God in every way? If so, please respond by, I do. I do. All right. So with that, it is my delight, it is my joy to have Peter Nix here to baptize him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What we're going to do, so because he's the first one, so we're going to give a little instruction. Kevin and I are going to have our arms behind you, Peter. We'll lower you down in. If you want to cover your face with your hand or your nose or whatever, that's fine. And then we will assist you back up. And we can hug, we can high five, we can celebrate at that point, all right? So let us baptize you, Peter Nix. Ready? Here we go. cold as you might think it is. <laughs> if you want to come out later, come for a little swim before lunch, come on out. We all have our opinions of the water temperature. <laughs> I'm more insulated than most. That, that is true. Who would like to be next? We don't have any particular order. Do we want to start with the Hurd family? Come on. Noah? Come on, Noah. You, you want to show the way? No. Come on, buddy. Be an example? Come on out. You can just no normal, set, your, right? set your towel there. There you go. This is this is uh, Noah. Noah heard. Are you trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, respond by saying, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Do you turn away from any known sin in your life, asking God to forgive you for your sins? Do you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit in your life, that you may live a life that is pleasing to God in every way? Of it, so All right, then we get to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You can hold your nose in. This is Carly, and and we're we're celebrating because the Heard family, uh, boy, it's it's a great day. We're celebrating so many of them joining in and, and rejoicing, and, and so thankful. They're such a blessing to our church that uh, we we truly are thankful. Well, with that, Carly, are you trusting Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If so, say Jesus is my Lord. Do you turn away from any known sin in your life, asking God to forgive you of your sins? And do you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit in your life that you may live a life pleasing to God in every way? Awesome. With that, we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here we go. is your Lord and Savior, so please respond by saying, Jesus is my Lord. <laughs> do you turn away from any known sin in your life, asking God to forgive your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit in your life, that you may live a life that is pleasing to God in every way? If so, you do. <laughs> All right, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Here we go. 
this is my <laughs> This is Lilani. This is Lilani, and again, I get to ask you the three questions. Are you trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, respond by saying, Jesus is my Lord. Do you turn away from any known sin in your, li in your life, asking God to forgive you of your sin? And do you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit in your life, that you may live a life that is pleasing to God in every way? Right. With that, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Adrian, are you trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, say Jesus is my Lord. Do you turn away from any known sin in your life, asking God to forgive you of your sin? Do you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit in your life, that you may live a life that is pleasing to God in every way? With that, we baptize you, Adrian, in the name of the Father. Super clean. This is Lone Lake after all. <laughs> Justice, you want to go next? Come on up. This is a day that I've been looking forward to for a long time. This is my son, if you don't know. So. Justice, are you trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, respond by saying, Jesus is my Lord. Do you turn away from any known sin in your life, asking God to forgive your sin? If so, say, I do. And do you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit in your life, that you may live a life that is pleasing to God in every way? With that, Justice, it's my joy and pleasure as your father, but also as your pastor. <laughs> baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You can plug your nose, and we're going to hold you and drop you in. Here we go. Thank you. Matthew, you want to do next? Come on in. Yeah, you're tough. You're 
Minnesotan, right? This is Cherie. We're celebrating with you today, Cherie. Now I'm going to read you through the questions here. Cherie, are you trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, say, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Do you turn away from any known sin in your life, asking God to forgive you of your sin? And do you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit in your life, that you may live a life that is pleasing to God in every way? With that, it is our joy and pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Plug your nose, go ahead. I'll grab your elbow. Kevin and I will have our hands behind you here. of being the first person to say she wanted to be baptized. She came up with the very first time to practice. It's me. Let's do it. It's cold. <laughs> we'll dry off when we're done. Oh, yeah. No, we we won't. Investing in our youth that they can go to camp and do things like that. Art of peace. Come on down. You know these waters well. We want to step back to you. You keep your own. Finally hitting that spurt. Getting up there. Carter, are you trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, please say, Jesus is my Lord. Do you turn away from any known sin in your life asking God to forgive your sin? I'm here, you may speak with our deacons and deaconesses, talk to them now, talk to them over lunch, talk to them after lunch. I don't care how cold the water gets, I'll come back out here if I've got to chip a hole through the ice. If you want to be baptized, we will make it happen. With that, uh, everybody dry off. We could maybe use a little bit of help getting everything set up for the meal. And uh, we're going to eat in just a couple of minutes, so relax and be friendly. And uh, thank you again for coming out and being part of this. What a beautiful, glorious day of celebration. Jesus is Lord, and we praise him. Amen. Amen.